the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my pain. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York. A nerve center of medical progress where skilled hands and great minds wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Morning, Jack. Oh, hi, sweetie. Well, everything's all right now, and my day has begun. You've been working for hours. Ah, but not living. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> what have you got there, Angel? Seven case histories, all for you, with the compliments of the chief diagnostician. Dr. Gillespie, the old son of a gun. What's he doing? Oh, he kept about the same number for himself. Sure he did. Picked out the interesting cases and sent me the calls. I've seen him operate before. Well, he ought to have some privileges after all these years. Oh, I know. I'm just kidding. Why, with 35 years staff service as of next week and being the greatest diagnostician, he ought to have all the privileges. He could have them, too, if he wanted. Yes, I think the Board of Regents lies awake nights worrying for fear he'll retire. Mm. Carew has nightmares about it, too. Do, do you think he'll be surprised by the testimonial dinner Friday night? Mm, I doubt if anything would really surprise Dr. Gillespie, but as far as I know, he hasn't heard about it anyway. Unless Parker's found out. I know. I like Parker, but she's such a gossip. <laughs> Everything she hears goes right through her head and out her mouth, with no pause for station identification. <laughs> That's why she hasn't been told. Oh, of course, it'll ruin everything. Oh, I know. Dr. Gillespie's a hard man to surprise, but I think the dinner Friday night will do it. Dr. Gillespie, I don't have the faintest notion of what you're talking about. Oh, confound it, Parker. Of course you know. You know everything that goes on around this hospital, whether it's any of your business or not. Well... A rumor wouldn't have a chance of getting past those flapping ears of uh, yours. Oh. Not to mention that long, snoopy nose. Oh! I have asked you a simple question, Parker, and you're just a simple-minded moron to give me a simple answer. I've told you three times already I have not heard any rumors about you, and if you won't tell me what kind of rumors, then you can... All just... right, all right, all right. All right, all right, now. Uh, the rumor is that the board is planning to retire me next week. Retire you? Not so loud. Ten to one, that pipsqueak Carew's behind it. But they can't do that. I am six years over age. Of course they can. Oh, but they wouldn't. Why, it's the last thing in the world. They, mm. you know, come to think of it, they might at that. Parker, stop grinning. You think for a minute you're going to get out from under my thumb? Why, sir, help me help Oh, me. good morning, Dr. Kildare. Good morning, Parker. Dr. Gillespie, I want to pick up my medical kit. I have seven new ward patients this morning. Oh, really, Jimmy? As if you didn't know. <laughs> to be sure, yes. Mm. Yes, 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 yep. Jimmy, um, have you happened to hear any interesting rumors around the hospital this morning? Rumors? No, can't say that I have. No wild, fantastic stories? Nothing out of the ordinary at all? No, oh, same old stuff. Mm. Well, better get on with my rounds. Uh... Oh, by the way, Dr. Gillespie, have you made any plans for Friday evening? Friday? No. No, as a matter of fact, I haven't. Why? The old Board of Regents is calling a special meeting. Special meeting? Yes, I thought we might attend together. Well, I uh, 
Well, you know I never go to board meetings, Jimmy. Might be a good idea to go to this one, though. It starts at 8 o'clock, incidentally. Special meeting, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't suppose you uh, uh, have any idea what it's all about. No, I guess we'll find out when we get there. Uh. Well, see you later. Uh. You were right, Dr. Gillespie. That's what they're going to do. Retired. Thrown on the scrap heap. Cast aside like an old hot water bottle. Well, I guess they realize that you aren't getting any younger. I never felt better in my life. Why, I can out-diagnose any other three doctors in this hospital. By the China Nation, I'll prove it to them. Calling Dr. Berman. Please come to surgery at once. Dr. Berman, come to surgery. Oh, uh, Dr. Hildare. Good morning, Dr. Uh, could I speak to you a moment? Sure. What can I do for you? Well... <clears throat> I know you and Dr. Gillespie have always been very close, and I wanted to ask you something about him. What do you mean? Well, I wondered whether you'd noticed anything about his actions during the last two days that might be considered, uh, hmm? well, uh, shall we be frank? Oh, let's do. <laughs> then we'll say his actions have been uh, odd. Eccentric? Quite. Well, I suppose that's frank enough. And as a matter of fact, Dr. Crewe, I've been too busy to pay much attention to him. Well, I can assure you, Dr. Kildare, that his manner is very, well, odd, quite. Mm. Why, for one thing, he's going to work now at 7.30 in the morning. What? Why, he hasn't started office hours before 9 or 9.30 for years. Precisely. Oh, I tell you, there's... Oh, dear. Here he comes. <laughs> As I was saying, Dr. Hillier, we're planning to paint the south wing a uh, light mold and the uh, east Good morning, wing. Jimmy. Good morning. Good morning. Carew, <laughs> you sleepyhead. Huh? Huh? Tried to find both of you eight o'clock this morning, but there wasn't a soul stirring. Except me, of course. Well, eight o'clock is a little early, Dr. Gillespie. Early? Why, I've already done a full day's work, and here it is, only lunchtime. Which is a good suggestion, by the way. How about joining me? Oh, sorry, Jimmy, sorry. I'd just grab a quick sandwich and then use the time to work off my excess energy. Excess energy? I wish I had some. I'll tell you the secret. <laughs> a pound of rare steak at 6.30 in the morning. What? There's nothing like it. After an hour's brisk walk... You're doing that? Oh, yes. You're following my cold shower, of course. Oh, dear. Don't even talk about cold shower early in the morning. Why, I've got more energy, physical and mental, than I had 20 years ago. Hey, uh, it's lunchtime, Zach. Uh, I mean, sir. Oh, so it is, Wayman. So it is. Well, I'm ready any time you are. Wayman, today I'm going to beat the pants off you. Yeah? Well, you didn't do so hot yesterday. Well, my feet kept slipping. <laughs> but I went out this morning and bought some bowling shoes. Bowling shoes? Is that how you're spending your lunch hour? Yes, Jimmy. Yes, yes, yes. Man keeps in trim, you know. Healthy, alert. Come on, Wayman. See you later, boys. Boys? Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I'm beginning to see what you meant, Dr. Guru. I don't know what it's all about, but it is uh, interesting. <laughs> Morning hall, Jimmy. Here are five new cases for you. Only five? By this check in in a long time. Well, there were 17 altogether, but I'm handling the other 12 myself. Oh, I see. Oh, good morning, Miss Banner. Good morning. I didn't mean to ignore you. That's all right, Dr. Gillespie. I've noticed how busy you've been this week. Uh, merely evidence of a well known medical fact, young lady. A man my age frequently gets a second wind. And he's good for 20 years more work. Well, watching you, I can believe it. Got to run, Jimmy. All right, sweetie. See you. Oh, wow. Wonderful girl, Jimmy. Huh? Why, if I were 10 years younger... 10? Well, that's the way I feel. Well, it's something I've been meaning to take up with you. Huh? You know, if I were your doctor, I'd uh, I'd advise you to slow down a little. Take it easy. Ah, ridiculous. I never felt better. Oh, come now. Sooner or later, everyone reaches an age when he has to retire. I won't from some retire. Of... Oh, no, no. I mean retire from participating in some of the more strenuous activities that a younger person might. Ah, nonsense. Maybe. 
I've heard you give the same advice to many elderly patients. Elderly? Well, anyway, let's leave it for the present. Hmm. We can talk about it this evening at the special board meeting. Board meeting? Uh -huh. We're still planning to have it then. Well, sure. Why not? Oh, no reason at all, Jimmy. No reason at all. Why shouldn't they have it? That's the way they feel. <laughs> exactly how you feel, Dr. Gillespie, and I'm very sorry for you, but after all, what can I do about it? Ah, you're just as ungrateful as that board of regents. Here I've nearly killed myself all week long trying to show them I'm fit for something beside retirement, but do they care? No. Shut up! No, they don't care. They're still going to hold their confounded meeting tonight Sit there and gloat while I'm drummed off the staff. Oh, yes. It's all so dramatic. Just just like the movie. Ah, Parker. Confound it. If I were flat on the back and dying, you'd stand there and say it was just like the... Hmm. What's the matter? Now, if they thought I was ill, dying maybe, why, they might call the whole thing off. Huh? Why, that they wouldn't have the heart to retire a man who was only one step from death. To... Oh, hello, Dr. Kildare. Uh, uh, say, Dr. Gillespie, I was wondering. Uh, if... What's the matter with you? Uh, huh? Oh, terrific pains, Jimmy. Oh, really? Where? Oh, the heart, lungs, oh, liver. Uh, well, we better get you to bed and check you over. Oh, it came on suddenly, Jimmy. Serious, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm sorry about the Board of Regents tonight. Oh, yes. Well, I'd better let Carew know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then we'll get to work on you. See what you can do for him, Parker. I know what I can do for him. You phony. Shut up, Parker. Uh, this is Kildare, Dr. Carew. Dr. Gillespie has just been taken ill. Can I get something for you, Dr. Gillespie? Oh, what a lousy act. No, I don't know how serious it is yet, but I thought you'd want to know in, in regard to the meeting tonight. You just let me lie here in the chair, Parker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back me up or I'll murder you. Oh, fine, Dr. Carew. I think that'll work out very well. All right, goodbye. Well, that takes care of that. Uh, uh Jimmy. I'm sorry about the meeting. Oh, that's all right. They're calling it off. Oh, they shouldn't have done that, Jimmy. Oh, it'll work out all right. You see, Carew's postponing it until next Tuesday. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. There's one more, Jimmy. The Jenkins case. Jenkins. Oh, yes, yes. Let's see. Exploratory information of external biliary fistula scheduled for surgery tomorrow morning. General preoperative condition good. Prognosis favorable. All right. And that's the last one. Oh, good. I hate reports. Jimmy, what's the prognosis for us? Hmm? No. Very favorable. Is that all? Excellent, then. That's better, Doctor. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you that you're very lovely? Oh, yes. Nearly all the interns. So that's what's been going on behind my back. Daily. Every hour in the hour. Well, it's got to cease. Yes, Jimmy. Drastic measures seem to be in order. Yes, Jimmy. And I only know of one sure way to put a stop to it. Yes. Good morning, Dr. Kildare. Bernard. Come in, Dr. Carew. Uh, thank you very much. Though, of course, I had him. 
So you are. I guess I'd better take these reports to the office, Dr. Kildare. Mm hmm. What was your opinion again on that last case? Oh, uh, prognosis terrific. Mm hmm. See you later. I can't say I've ever heard that expression before. Prognosis terrific. You're not likely to again, Dr. Crewe. Anything I can do for you? Well, frankly, I'm very concerned about Dr. Gillespie. Oh, he's feeling much better today. I couldn't find anything wrong with him, in fact. I, I think he probably just strained some muscles with all this athletic activity he's gone in for. And that's precisely what I'm concerned about, Dr. Gilder. In what way? I wonder if it might not be a good idea for Dr. Gillespie to retire. Retire? Well, now that's odd. He mentioned the same subject himself a few days ago. Really? Of course, he seemed highly opposed to the idea, but that might be just a cover-up. Cover-up? Uh, uh, I don't follow you. Well, he's talked about retiring for years, you know, and I've never taken him seriously. Maybe he now he really wants to retire, but feels he has a duty to the hospital. Certainly developed a lot of non-medical interests lately. Oh, maybe he has. Well, if that's true, we could make the testimonial dinner a retirement dinner... As much as I'd hate. Mm hmm. Well, I'll talk to him, try to find out. Subtly, of course. Well, all right. But I wonder. No, if it just is... sit tight, keep your gardenia watered. I'll let you know. Oh, of course I feel all right, Jimmy. There was nothing really wrong with me in the first place. Except, well,. Touch of overwork, maybe. Well, certainly not. No, no, no. I am perfectly capable of turning out as much work as I ever could. Well, then maybe it was a combination, like too much bowling, brisk walks, cold showers, rare steak. Ah, oh, ridiculous. I was merely conducting an experiment, Jimmy. I see. Then, uh, Dr. Gillespie, have you thought much lately about uh, retiring? <gasps> By the great horn spoon. Now, I know you have a strong loyalty to Blair, but mm. after all, your reputation as a diagnostician has made this hospital. Uh, you don't owe your whole life to it. You too, Jimmy. I guess you feel the same way as the others, hmm? that I've slipped into my dotage and ready for the scrappy. Now, oh, hold it a second. I don't see that retirement automatically means senility. Hmm. But perhaps it is time you started thinking of yourself for a change. Hmm. Well, look what happened last week. You overdid it for a few days and wound up here in bed. You're just not as young as you were once. By the tarnation. So that's their reasoning. The morons. Hmm? Confounded backfire, the vultures. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I should have stayed with the first plan. Parker! Parker! What happens, Dr. Gillespie? Stop shouting like that. You're a convalescent. You're an idiot. What? Parker, phone the garage and have Wayman come right up here. Wayman? Well, what do you want him it's for? It's none of your business. Get out of here. Oh. Snoopy. Oh, well. There was still a little fight in the old man, Jimmy. So help me, I'll show him yet. Oh, who, what? Plans, experiments, backfires, a little more of this, and I'll be as eccentric as you are. Who says I'm eccentric? I do. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie, but I simply don't get it. Parker, you never get it. Well, I guess I'm not so stupid. Parker, you idiot. I shouldn't have changed plans. I think I'd almost convinced him that I still possess the full vigor and alertness of youth. Well, you didn't convince me. Oh, well, what do you know about youth? I think one last desperate measure may do the job. Well, it must be desperate if you plan to use Wayman for it. If there's one human being who's a direct descendant of a chimpanzee, Wayman's it. Somebody mention my name. Oh. Oh, come in, Wayman. Come in, come in. Come in, shut the door. Yes. I was just telling Parker that you're the only man with the right qualifications for a little project of mine. Oh, well, thanks, Doc. I, I mean, <laughs> sir, I've always tried to keep myself mental fit. Mental fit? Huh? <laughs> well, that does explain your personality. Yeah, I'm a great guy for pinball games Man. and tic-tac-toe. Yeah, mental type stuff. Well, the qualifications I had in mind are slightly different. Hmm? One is the fact that you like to make a fast buck. <laughs> you said it. Yeah. The other is your lack of inhibitions about prevarication. 
Who? What you said? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I want to get mixed up in nothing like that. Well, yeah. What I mean is you don't mind telling a lie if there's money in it. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, why didn't you say so? We I, men, uh, I think we understand each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure we do. Uh, What's your proposition, Doc? Doc? Well, uh, help me, if I didn't need you, I'd... Well, misery, politics, and retirements make strange bedfellows. <laughs> yeah. Wayman, have a cigar. I simply can't understand what's keeping him, Dr. Kildare. We really ought to leave in a few minutes now. Oh, you'll be along, Dr. Crew. He knows he's supposed to meet me here in your office. But since he thinks it's just a board meeting and nothing else, he may not even bother to come. Oh, I think he will, Diana. I tried to keep stressing the importance of the meeting without tipping him off that it's actually a dinner in his honor. I'm sure he'll be here, though. Well, in view of his erratic behavior the past week, I wouldn't be surprised at anything he might do. He has acted strangely. I can't quite understand what it... Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, good evening. Well, Miss Werner, you're looking charming. That's much too lovely a gown for a board meeting. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> Sorry to be a couple of minutes late, boys. But I didn't bother with the elevator. I walked up. You walked? Twelve floors? Oh, it's all a matter of constitution. Wine improves with age, you know. Mm. Well, let's go on into the boardroom. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, the meeting's being held over at Fontaine's Restaurant, Dr. Gillespie. There's a taxi down. There. Fontaine's Restaurant? Yes. By the tarnation, that's the last straw. What do you mean? I had no idea I'd have to face this humiliation in a public place. What are you talking about? I am a tired old man, Crew, and I can't go on with the act. Go ahead, then. Throw me out. Kick me in the teeth. But don't ask me to be present while you do it. Oh, dear, 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 dear. He's finally gone off his rocker. All right, Dr. Carew. I guess we'd better call off the surprise. Dr. Gillespie, this isn't a board meeting. It's a testimonial dinner to celebrate your 35 years with Blair Hospital. What? You, you, you mean I'm not being retired? I hope not for many years, Dr. Gillespie. Of course, we have wondered about some of your actions recently. Grossly exaggerated, Carew. Nothing at all to those rumors you heard. Rumors? But I did actually see some things myself. Misinterpreted, Crow. You merely a little experiment of mine. Well, the board members will be very happy to hear it. Mm. Uh, things had got back to some of them. Oh, uh, mm. there you are, Doc. Uh, I mean, sir, I'm ready to pay off. Here's your ten bucks. Get away, Wayman. You bother me. Boy, I sure never would have thought you could do it. Do what, Wayman? No, Jimmy, he doesn't know. You see, the doc and me has been balling every day, and he's been taking me regular. Wayman. Rolls 240s, 250s, I didn't have no chance, so I cooked up this here race. Wayman. 30 laps around the garage on roller skates. What? Dr. Gillespie. There's nothing to it, Carew. He's a pathological liar. He beat me by six laps. Wayman, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, but but, but you said to tell... Get out of here. Sure, 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 doc. I mean, yes, sir. No, uh, uh, yes, sir. Another backfire, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what either of you is talking about. I don't know what any of you are talking about. You know, when you come right down to it, neither do we. Come on, let's go to the party. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. And so, in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to assure you again of my appreciation for the things you said, the sentiments you expressed, and to the distinguished members of the board for their fine gift of this handsome gold watch. Thank you. Oh, 
Nincompoop. Distinguished nincompoop, Dr. Gillespie. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. And now, immediately following the demitasse, we are to be favored by another number from the string quartet. <laughs> Gold watch. Look at the thing, Jimmy. 35 years of my life spent here, and all they can come through with is a cheap gold-plated watch with an engine on it. No, no, no. It's the sentiment that counts, you know. Sentiment? You'll love it. All right, Jimmy. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I do. Well, you certainly deserve it, Dr. Gillespie. This hospital could never repay what you've done for us. Miss Verner, your generosity is only exceeded by your beauty and charm. Well, maybe you have grown 20 years younger. No, no, Jimmy. No, no. This last week has been sheer murder. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, sweetie? What, Jimmy? We could stand up, walk about five steps, open that door, and we'd be out on the terrace. Uh-huh. And we could close the door and... Jimmy? Yeah. Then what? Don, if I know. Let's go find out. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, and Ed Max. Dick Joy speaking. Thank <laughs> you.